Um, hello everyone. I'm High King Masenko, and I'm joined today by uh, our heir. Um, go ahead. Ahoy. And uh, yeah, so um, we're gonna we're gonna start up pretty soon. There were several laws passed. Uh, one of which is this state treasury slash federal treasury. Um, Management Act, which we're just kind of setting up right now. Um, but let's actually just uh, start the stream. Oh, okay. And Joe's just going to go ahead and say down with the High King. Very nice of you to say say so. Um, and yeah, so uh, also uh, Mods just posted this really cool thing that that was also passed, um, the official name, flag, and anthem submission thread. Um, so we're going to have some cool like national symbols and stuff uh, soon. So I suggest everyone go and have fun and make some make some cool looking stuff. Memes. Yeah. So um, that, that should be good. Um, yeah, all right. I can't so, find the stream. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, Twitch TV slash Democracy. Should be. I can. Right. And the stream will come up soon on the announcements as well. So now that I'm streaming, because the bot picks it up. It actually has it. I mean, it's not in the announcement. It should take about. Uh, it should take a couple minutes. Usually, it's kind of slow. So, okay. load game. So, here we are again. Um, Harold Hadrada. Hardrada. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> so, I've never actually played uh, Civilization VI. Cool. Well, if you have any questions, just tell me because... I'm sure there are people who. I, I think I will. I'll have plenty of uh, questions. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that'll be that'll be really helpful for the people who are watching too, who maybe don't know a whole lot of. I can also things. hear everything we're saying. Um, are you watching the stream right now? Yeah, that's why. Okay. Uh, yeah, just you can turn down the volume. Uh, the stream has yeah. a slight delay. I think it's about fifteen seconds or so, or ten. Okay. I don't remember. All right. Um, so we're just loading in right now. Do you have any questions at all about like Norway's unique stuff that they do, their abilities or unique units slash buildings? Mm -hmm. What any of that means? Do you know what's special about the Stave Church? Um, I think it gives production um, as well as faith. Uh, I don't remember the exact mm -hmm. thing, but I also think it has to do with coastal tiles as well. Ah, I, think it, if it, I like if coastal you... stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, Norway is pretty fun. In terms of its, it's it's pretty single-minded as a sieve. Um, just kind of has the whole boat thing going for it, um, and all the abilities synergize towards that. But uh, they're really fun. So it's just loading right now. Should take a couple minutes. My computer's a little slow sometimes. How's the quality, by the so way? So what's new with you? Uh. Not much, just uh, on spring break right now, enjoying it. There's a lot of new uh, uh. 
There's a lot of new Hearthstone content coming out, so I've been enjoying that as well. <laughs> I, I played Hearthstone, Hearthstone a little bit. Yeah. Alright, so we're heading into game. Not too much, though. Okay, we're in. So here what? we are. You'll, you'll, it'll pop up in just a sec. So right now our current treasury is at um, 83 gold, and we're making 5.2. Uh, we're making 5.2 gold a turn. Um, and in terms of our where the gold's coming from, five gold is coming from the palace. I don't know where the point two gold is coming from, but I think that's also just from is there the palace. Check? Okay. Um, it might just be from like adjacency bonuses or something. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Hmm. Um, I don't. I don't really know why that is there. I hope we won't get sued over this. Point two. Yeah. So right now we got a um, Viking longship in production. Uh, it's going to take five more turns before that's finished. Um, we've met the Russians, but we don't know where their capital is quite yet. Um, I'm going to take a little screenshot right now. How do I take a screenshot again in uh, Steam? Shoot. Let me look it up real quick. It is F12, right. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to do the um, unit stuff right now. I'm going to move my warrior into this uh, forest right here. Uh, so what has the, what have the, what the high council said about what we got to do with the warriors and all that? Well, yeah, so, so my wonderful Hersir, uh, Herr Knockenbruch, uh, he has recommended that I fortify um, the wounded units um, and move the warrior in such a way that I can see um, the barbarian encampment and make sure that it thwarts off anything that might come out of it. Um, mm. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, my 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 Thane um, Haldir has also come up with a kind of interesting plan to lure out the spearmen that are camped in there, um, and then move in and try to um, engage, quote unquote, in diplomatic relations with the <laughs> the people there. See if they would be willing to join our join our wonderful civilization. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to move the warrior. So is that an RP thing, or is it actually possible? Uh, no, it's not actually possible. It would just be us clearing the camp and getting some gold. Um, oh, but okay, yeah. but uh, it is possible to with with strategic moving to lure out the spearmen. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to fortify that guy. And then we have... Uh, civics, and I believe the, um, I believe, uh, I got a ping, yeah, it's working, uh, I believe, so the civic tree, uh, act tells me that we must choose, choose, uh, foreign trade after code of laws, which we just finished. Um, what does foreign trade do? It unlocks two civic cards. Uh, one is related to trade routes, and the other is related to production towards uh, naval units, which is really nice for us. Um, it also unlocks the trader unit, which allows us to trade with other civilizations or other cities within our range. Um, and it allows us to uh, join certain wars and make joint wars. 
ahead. What does yeah. that mean to join wars? So in this game, there, there, it's kind of weird. Um, I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to use a Peter as an example. Um, I can. So the, there's this sort of grievance system in this game where um, if you sort of do things that other civilizations don't like, you start to accumulate grievances, which means that they can inflict grievances on you equal to the number of grievances you inflicted on them without any sort of penalties, basically. So it's like you get like revenge points, kind of. Um, and so if I were to declare a surprise war on him, that generates 150 grievances. And other civilizations... Will, won't like you if you have if committed grievances against other players um, but if you look here there's Cassus Belli as well which we don't have any currently because we have, haven't researched the correct stuff um, but if you look there's formal wars which is uh, a war in which how so if we denounce Peter um, and then we wait a little while we can declare a formal war because we've denounced mm -hmm. him, and that's actually 50 less grievances. And then a Golden Age War, if we were in a Golden Age and we have denounced him as well, we can do it for 25 grievances, which is like really low and really nice. Um, that's a really cool uh, mechanic. Yeah, so it's like it's in certain conditions. So if we if we were to do a joint war, that basically if we have if we found another civilization. Um, and we wanted to declare war on Peter, we could ask them to join the war with us. Or we, and the other thing, join ongoing war, is we could we could join an ongoing war for fewer grievances than if we were to just be the ones to declare it. So we're going to click foreign right. trade. That's going to be what we're looking for. And it's Eureka is discover a second continent. I'm not sure we'll be able to get that um, in time, but we're definitely going to try. Um, since we do have two scouts, and that's going to be really helpful for finding uh, natural wonders and second continents, which are the two things that we're. Also, oh, we have now. a ship on the way, right? Yeah, we do have a ship on the way, which will be also incredibly helpful for that. Um, so now we're going to fill the policy slots, and we've chosen based on the legislative order on policies we're going to pick uh, God King for our economic policy which gives plus one faith and plus one gold in the capital which is really cool so now the capital will be generating six gold per turn I believe uh, and then for our military policy we're going to be doing survey and um, most people like strategically when they're playing will pick discipline um, but we thought that survey was a really flavorful um, policy for what um, at least you know my party likes exploration a lot and we do have two scout units so it's not the worst in the world in, in our current situation um, so we, we really like these policies so I'm gonna go ahead and, and confirm those right now Hi. and did you have any questions before I hit next turn uh, no okay I'm go ahead and hit next turn right now who just joined channel? It's Angus. Hey Angus, how's it going? I'm gonna move the warrior He's there. Uh, my scout is still fortified, and we're gonna continue along this river here. Oh, it looks like we have found Russian borders. Hmm. Excellent. Is that the Russian border? Yeah, so the Russian border, this this little um yellow and yellow and black line it looks like. I'm a little colorblind, so hmm. um yeah, so that's what that looks like. And right now we're making we have 89 gold in our treasury and are making uh 6.2 gold per turn. As expected, all of that's coming. So eight, all of that is 89. coming. Yep, we're at 89 right now. Also, um, I want to touch on something that uh, I discussed with my council. Um, I was planning on sending a delegation to Russia, um, but a lot of my council members, um, all three of them essentially, uh, have advised me to wait on that for a little while. Um, and uh, get more information about that, about Russia. A waste of money. 
yeah, yeah. So that that would cost twenty five gold, which is quite a chunk of our of our treasury. So we'll uh, we'll wait on that. Um, they, they, I, I like, I like Peter, um, personally, but I want to, I'll, I'll listen to the advice of my council and, uh, wait on that for a little bit. Um, and so I, I know I explained this last time, but do you know how, um, agendas work for the, um, um, other leaders? I think so. Okay. So we'll go back. And so, uh, going into turn 17 now and click next turn. Uh, yeah, sure. And I'm going to fortify my warrior right here. And then we're going to go and look at St. Petersburg with our scout. Um, what's cool about uh, Civ 6 is until you research um, until you research early empire, uh, borders are just open. Like you can just go into other people's territories. Um and it doesn't bother them? No, it doesn't. Um, there's just nothing stopping that right now. Um, but they can enforce their borders once we once we hit early empire. Um, mm. Though I'm going to pretend... And they that... don't care when you go through their borders? Yeah, no, they don't care. They have no... Uh, I mean, maybe uh, it might have like minus one diplomatic penalty if it if it's threatening or or something um, like with our mm. with our military units. But like with my scout, I don't think it has any sort of significant um, diplomatic penalties um, he will enforce it though once he researches that civic uh, and right now we're at 96 um, gold 6.2 per turn still okay um, I gotta figure out how I'm doing this uh, calculation um, taxes and the I'm pretty sure it's you just can, 20%. You can continue on. Okay. Okay. All right. It looks like a little skirmish has been going on down here between the Russians and these Tundra people. Um, my scout has fully healed. do one more because I think my mouse is in the way uh, and we're gonna continue north with this scout ooh we have met Vilnius the city-state excellent so let's talk about city-states for a second city-states are a little more complicated yeah, no, than good. they were in Civ 5 so um, so we have we have these things called envoys, um, and we we generate one envoy point per turn. Right now, we can there are ways to boost that. Um, and so, since we were what the is sorry, what is uh, what is um, generating the envoys? That we, because we met the Vilnius. Uh, Government and policies are the primary sources of influence points. I can double check on that. I think just the fact that we have like civics going in general. I think um, it might be our government type. Yeah, it's a chiefdom. Oh, oh I so thought you were... So since we're okay. a chiefdom, we generate one influence point per turn, uh, right. which is just the. the you said that we we generate one on per turn. So. No, no, no. One on like one influence point per turn is what they're called and okay. once you hit a hundred of them you get a one envoy um, but okay. since we were the first person to meet uh, Vilnius we have an automatic envoy there so we have one envoy set sent or that might not be the oh, that might not be true I don't I think well it I says think. envoy sent one this is as the first major civilization to meet Vilnius you've earned one envoy there yeah so we met them first um, and then their quest right now is uh, to destroy the barbarian posts within five tiles. Um, and if we do that quest, we'll get another envoy with them. So that's actually something that my Thane will have to consider and my military advisor will have to consider whether getting that envoy is worth fighting these barbarians over. 
Mm -hmm. um, and additionally, they're a cultural city-state. Um, so right now, the fact that we have an envoy there gives us plus two culture in our capital right now, which is really sweet. Um, and if we get many envoys, um, we start to ramp that up. And if we become the suzerain, um, the, we get a unique bonus. The suzerain is when we get three envoys, um, or rather, we have to get three envoys, and if we have more of envoys than anybody else, we become the suzerain of that city-state. So you have to have more of envoys there than anybody else, and you have to have at least three there. Um, and that's like being their ally in Civ Five. Yeah, basically. Um, and the bonus is for each for the highest active alliance level, all your theater square districts receive plus fifty percent adjacency bonus, which is rather irrelevant right now. So I'm not going to bother explaining that. Um, it's just like if you have like theater square bonuses get theater squares get more culture basically um, if you have alliances going on. Okay. Um, and another cool thing is for every city state you're a suzerain of, you get diplomatic favor. Diplomatic favor is a resource that is uh, tradable, so you can like. Um, give it to other civilizations. It doesn't actually do anything except when the World Congress comes around and it's um it's sort of uh, like it's free... like a democracy coins. Yeah, it's basically free votes in the World Congress um that you can spend it to get more votes in certain resolutions and it's also one of the key parts of uh winning a diplomatic victory because you have to vote for yourself using diplomatic points basically to try to win it mm -hmm. you could also buy diplomatic points off of uh, other people and, and whatnot so that's cool oh, that's cool so that's that um we're gonna go back over here to russia and we're gonna keep moving um i think we're gonna keep moving east with our scout because um Yeah. Exploring is cool. Yeah, I think the I think the further away we get from our capital, the more likely we are to find a second continent, which is pretty essential. And how many turns do we have a ship? Uh, two turns until our ship is done. So uh, we took a little screenshot of that already. So let's move on to next turn. By the way, we had a hundred and two in the treasury right there, and now we have a hundred and eight. Uh, look at that. Okay, we found a barbarian encampment with our scout, the one that Villainous was talking about. Our scout should be safe there. Uh, we'll keep moving. Okay, we found a little, um, little interesting uh, couple lakes near St. Petersburg. Um, okay, we'll keep going. Turn 20, we have, excellent. Okay, so first of all, our Viking longship has finished, and we got plus two, or sorry, we've got plus seven era points. Plus four for making the longship, and plus three for being the first to roam the yeah, seas. Ships. That's yes. Nice. That's a good thing to have. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, and then, of course, um, that means we'll have to pick some new production right now. We're going to go ahead and check to see this coast. Oh, cool. Okay. So we have another city-state, Hattusa. Where is that? Uh, that is to the east of Vilnius. Um, How did we meet them? It seems like their bar or it seems like their warrior was over here attempting to clear the encampment, um, ah. and so we ran into it. Um, and uh, we have a nice little mountain range here, so we could potentially settle somewhere over here soon. That would be really cool. Um, cool. So so let's look at what. Uh, Hattusa's quest is, their quest is to send a trade route, and their unique bonus is 
that it provides us with two of each strategic resource per turn that you have revealed but not ha have not improved um, if that that is if we are their suzerain and we have one mm. envoy sent uh, because we were well, the first. what would we gain from just sending them a trade out right now if we were to send a trade out right now we'd gain one envoy and obviously some gold oh, okay. um, and does that give us does one envoy give us any uh, it doesn't give us uh, let's see I can check yeah so if we have uh, the the first time anything really happens is when we get three envoys so the second envoy oh. doesn't do anything um, really but it it's like if we get one more then we are in a good position because we get some okay. bonuses from the city-state um, so yeah right. uh, and another thing worth mentioning is when the era ends um, city states will give you new quests um, except the city states which you didn't complete quests for those quests will just stay right so basically what I'm saying is like it's in our interest to try and finish these quests uh, before the end of the era so that next era we can have even new quests and therefore we can get more envoys that way right so there's only one quest per turn uh, per era yeah yeah um, I think that's an important feature that people should take note of um i'm gonna keep our warrior here um nice and fortified we're gonna choose production right now and so we got six turns till a new settler um and we have we can make a builder potentially we've researched what have we researched so far we don't have any of the basic stuff. We might go to an I think we're going to animal husbandry. No, we're going to No, we're going to animal husbandry after astrology if I remember correctly. Let me check. I can check, yeah. Yeah, animal husbandry after that, which will be really nice cuz we have some uh cattle and deer here. Um and we can also already improve the fish um tiles with a builder if we wanted to build that. Um, we could also build a second Viking longship, potentially. I like that idea. Um, but I'm just thinking about whether that's entirely necessary. Um, so since we built the longship, by the way, uh, we're back down to five gold per turn, five point two gold per turn, right. since that's going to take one gold to maintenance. Um, and we should be founding a pantheon soon as well. Um, right. Let's see. So you decided on building a settler for now? Um, I haven't decided on anything yet. I wanna, I'm wanna. i going to wait on that, and I'm going to use my ship to explore a little bit. Let me take some screenshots of my boat. Um, we're going to fortify this warrior. We're going to keep exploring with this scout. Okay, we've ran into a warrior here. Um, barbarian warrior so he probably will take a hit but we can retreat him pretty quickly he's faster than the warriors so we're not worried about that too much now we have to pick production we have to decide on something um, so what would you do with a builder right now with a builder uh, we would improve these fish right here um, which would give us I don't know I don't remember what fish gives you if you improve it. It might be more food, um, which isn't entirely necessary right now. Um, honestly, I think for the interests of our game in general, uh, getting a settler out is probably a good idea just because we want to start having the ability to have multiple states, which is going to be a fun feature. Do you um, see any place that would be a good place for another city? Yeah, there's, um, there's like, just settling up river seems pretty decent. There's some good resources around there and some mountains, which are good for, um, like, faith districts um, and science mm -hmm. districts. Interesting. Um, we could also settle up coast here near Vilnius, uh, when it, but we'd have to potentially clear that encampment right there which I'm not a huge fan of um, though it would give us a, an envoy with Vilnius. That actually so sounds we'll, like a really good deal. Yeah 
Well, I think that's obviously I think that's something we can discuss as a community. Yeah. Um, I don't want to make that decision unilaterally or not, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so let's uh, let's get the settler finished up, and yeah, that'll be that. We started on a settler. Cool. Uh, so right now we have 114 gold in the treasury. In case you didn't catch that. Gonna click uh, next turn. Yeah. Okay. So. Our scout took some damage. That's okay. We're gonna retreat him south near Saint Petersburg. Um, but after that, uh oh, a scout from I'm not quite sure which encampment has found us out. They've, they've located our capital. Uh -oh. Which is potentially dangerous. Um, I don't think it's going to be a big deal since we have a warrior here and we can sort of um, body block him a little bit. Um, how would you get them to... How would you lure them out? Well, we're not going to lure them out right now, um, obviously. Uh, the, the best way to do it is to have a slinger because the spearmen like to attack slingers, um, uh, because of the, it's like enough of a, uh, it's enough of a bonus that um, their the AI is comfortable with attacking it, um, so it, it lures it out, um, and while that happens, we can potentially get the warrior to go steal the camp itself. Um, but I think right now our priority is stopping this scout from getting back to its encampment. Um, because if it does that, then we could have a raid on our hands. Um, which is basically, this: once the scout gets back, the barbarian sp encampment spawns some units and sends it towards our capital. Um, which is a really cool feature, but something that we want to avoid in general. <laughs> so I'm going to move him, I'm going to move my warrior right here. Um, and then I'm going to move my Viking ship this way, see if we can see any other lands from where we are. Um, I'm going to move my scout there. Well, we can't actually go on to the ocean top, right? No, nah, we can't just yet. But we're gonna. I wanted to see if there were any sort of uh, land masses near enough to that that we could potentially trigger. Is there. astrology? Is that what astrology gives us? Uh, astrology, no. A foreign trade, yes. Uh, foreign trade, the the Eureka is discovering a second continent. Astrology is finding a natural wonder. Oh no, I meant um, like how do we get to go on the ocean path? I believe it's here? down the road quite a bit. Oh. Um, it's I think. That's unfortunate. Cartography, right? Yeah. It's cartography, which is in the Renaissance era. So it's going to take a while before we can do that. Um, so yeah. But now, very exciting. Uh, we're going to found a Pantheon. And so let's see if Divine Spark is still available for us. It does not look like it is unless I missed it. Oh, yes, here it is. Okay. So, uh, establishment of the Norwegian Pantheon Act uh, states that we shall sh choose the first ranked Pantheon still available in game, uh, with Divine Spark being the first choice and Divine Spark being still available. Uh, we're going to pick Divine Spark. Is that, um, is that the correct interpretation of that? Yeah. Okay. So what does it give us? One great person point? Yeah, one great person point from holy sites uh, and campuses and theater squares. So basically when we get when we build a district, um, one of those three districts, holy sites, campuses, and theater squares, um, it'll, it'll give us plus one great person point uh, per turn for the prophets, scientists, and writers, respectively. Not bad. 
Yeah, it's pretty good. So uh, we're going to found this Pantheon. Do wait, wait, we gotta give, do we give it a name or? No, the or Pantheon doesn't have anything. Okay. And we've been inspired uh, for mysticism, which is another thing. We're going to look at this right now. Plus one era score for having a pantheon. Yeah, we don't choose a religion name until we actually found a religion. This is just the first step. Um, and we're going to retreat our scout this way. And maybe we can fortify him here. No, we're going we're gonna to cancel that. We're going to just, just skip a turn with him. See if the warrior chases me or not. Okay, so everything's going swell. Uh, right now we have 120 gold in the treasury. We founded our Pantheon. Uh, celebration can be heard from the theocratic fundamentalists. I think I hear them in the distance cheering. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and end the turn right now. Okay, so Peter has sent us a trade delegation. Ah, we have uh, Cheminsky Bogdan says, Norway can enter Ocean Town after discovering shipbuilding. Oh, I didn't know that. We can we can double check that to make sure. Oh yeah, civilian units can. Civilian units can. I do remember that. Um, but that's not super uh, effective unless you want to settle other continents. Um, like you don't want to go exploring with a builder, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, like trade routes can go over ocean, which is actually really helpful too. Um, but no substantial exploration, especially with the the boats, until um, what was it? The Renaissance air attack. Um, okay, so he sent us a delegation. Ah. Um, what this does is it's going to give us twenty five gold. Um, it's going to allow him to see a certain level of what we're doing in our capital, um, which isn't super relevant since he's a computer and he can't really make meaningful <laughs> decisions based off that. Um, I told you there was no need to send, send a delegation. Well, this doesn't count as us sending him a delegation. Right, but we got a, we got gold out of it. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept his delegation. Because um, I like Peter, and then there's really no downside for it. Um, so I'm going to just take a screenshot that we have a... And this is important. This gold goes straight to the federal treasury. Oh, yeah. That is that is important. Okay, yeah. So we did get we did get 25 gold from Peter just then, I believe. What was our gold last turn? Like, what was our amount? 120. Yeah, so we did get 25 here, because now we're at 150. I just wanted to make sure that was not something. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna rebound this scout with our warrior. We're gonna move this scout north more. It's kind of traversing some like hills and rivers and whatnot. So it's been kind of slow for this poor scout over here. We're still rebounding our warrior. This ship over here has some exploration to do. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving south with this scout because we don't want that warrior to come beat me up. Um, okay, y'all set? You ready for next turn? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> it's a little tight right there. So we're gonna uh, move this scout away. I think this makes for a good shot though. Surrounded by barbarians, he makes his daring escape. <laughs> and we've discovered another uh, encampment uh, to the east of St. Petersburg. So we're going to try to get this scout out of harm's way as best we can right now and just fortify him. Someone um, should write a diary for the scout. <laughs> Definitely. 
definitely. Uh, we're going to keep cornering this scout right here to make sure he can't get anywhere. We have a scout inside our borders right now, um, but he's not going to do anything right now. Cause he, there's oh, no our city also can't shoot at him. Yeah, um, we can't shoot okay. at him until we um, until we research. Uh, not research. We 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 have to build city walls to do that. Hmm. Which is pretty cool. It's a cool mechanic they added. We're gonna keep going north with my boat. We'll keep exploring that way. I also really love the the names uh, that they've added to. Uh, like the different rivers and mountain ranges and deserts and whatnot. So like St. Petersburg is settled on the Don River. Hmm. Uh, we've got the Volga River and the Daugav okay. something river. Yeah. Try there. saying our mountain that's next to our city. It's, it, I, I actually can't see one of the letters because the wheat is... I can actually turn off the wheat. Hold on. Uh, you should research that comes. Yeah. So... Uh, good brands dolls login. <laughs> good brands dolls login. I think I did a pretty good job. Don't judge me, please. Um, <laughs> we got the Rauma River over here. I don't know what this desert's called quite yet, but um, yeah, I love that. Really I love cool. that feature. Um, okay. Uh, right now we have 155 gold in the treasury and 5.2 gold per turn. How much gold do I currently have at my disposal? You control so, everything. That's true. I can. Let's think of stuff we might wanna might wanna purchase. I'm like honestly considering purchasing a slinger or a builder when we reach that amount of gold. Um, huh. But uh, am I limited? Why not a long ship? A long ship's mm -hmm. gonna be two sixty, so that we're gonna have to get more than a hundred gold. Yeah, that'll take some um, time. And slinger, slinger is just good because we should be building more military units, honestly. Um, uh, slinger would be good because we also want to lure out the, those barbarians. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I wonder if this is okay. Um, since I'm since the federal government ha can only spend a certain amount. Um, and the states can only spend a certain amount. Right. I so wonder... the thing is, a state treasury can move gold to the federal treasury uh, as much as they want. Okay. As long as the so URL just... approves it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the state government, but you don't have one. And can so the federal treasury send money to the, the URLs yeah. as well? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send money from the federal treasury to the state treasury so that I can purchase the slinger right now. I'll have to like get all of the, the calculations then. Okay. So just go. But you just go ahead. Yeah. I'm gonna purchase that. It's gonna cost 140 gold. And it doesn't look like it's affected our uh, expenses in terms of gold per turn. I can double check to make sure that's true um, I will go check here list of reports yields yeah so the only thing actually cost in gold right now is the Viking longship and we can I'll take a screenshot of the uh, reports at the end of the end of the session okay. so why are we getting the plus two from the plus uh, point, uh, two, point two I have no idea it's like it's weird. Maybe maybe the capital just gives you plus point two, like five point two for whatever reason. I I honestly don't know. <laughs> it's like a weird amount. Yeah. I, I just I don't. Maybe if someone can someone who knows better can explain that to me, that would be super cool. If anybody's listening, because um, I just really don't know where that's coming from. It might be coming from like population or something. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, all right, going into turn 24 now. You all set? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, awesome. So the scout actually attacked our warrior right here, um, which is really nice, which is really good. Um, 
because right now that means we can actually kill the scout with our slinger um, and get a, bo a nice boost. Um, I don't actually know that because I'm role-playing that I have no idea what that's going to do. But we're going to kill the scout with the slinger anyway and see what happens. Uh, so you attack with the warrior. And then we attack with the slinger. And we get a boost for uh, archery. Uh, very nice. Okay. Keep going north with this boat. Keep going this way. We met another scout over here in the Simpson Desert. As our scout here uh, keeps traversing these mountain ranges. Over here, our scout is seems to be safe again. So we're gonna we're gonna fortify and hope that nothing kills him. We're going to fortify regularly so that it warns us. Okay, so right now we have 21 gold in the treasury. We're making 5.2. So the slinger doesn't cost any maintenance either. No, I think, the, I think what's cool is the early game units don't cost anything. I think once you start building like swordsmen and, and actual good units, that, that's what they... Or maybe it's... Um, uh -huh. There might be a cost if you have like a lot of them. I think if you have like three that might be one gold or something. I'm not a hundred percent sure though. Okay. Okay, gonna click next turn. Okay, and we have finished researching astrology. Um a physician without a knowledge of astrology has no right to call himself a physician, says Hippocrates. That's wise. <laughs> Why would a physician need to know astrology, though? I have no idea. I'm gonna keep going north with our boat. Saying so you want to tell us what uh, astrology gave us? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, so astrology has allowed us to build a holy site, which is really good and something we definitely want to build as soon as possible um, so after the settler I think I'm just gonna straight up start that holy site mm -hmm. um, and then Stonehenge uh, which is a wonder that we can actually look to see how much turns it costs okay 22 but we don't have any stone nearby so unfortunately we won't be able to build Stonehenge Stonehenge just gives you a free great profit um, so when do districts uh, come to the picture uh, we have one right now. We can actually build a holy site. Um, oh, a holy site is a district. Is a district okay. Yeah. Um, and in that district, we can build a shrine, which will give us plus two faith and one great profit point per turn. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to build that as soon as we can, which will be next turn, once we finish this settler. Um, now, while that settler's done, I if you don't mind would you mind like looking to see if i i mean i think i'm i'm quite positive that i have control over the settler but i want to see the exact like um i'll look in the constitution the exact stuff yeah that would be really helpful it looks like two judges are our judges yelling at okay. me did i do something illegal guys i don't know you will be no, I don't think they're talking about it. About okay. This issue. Just making sure. Um, all right, and then we're. Building... I think as the because you're the Yarrow, you the city you have control. Of, so. Okay. I'm going to assume that's correct, and uh, yeah, sure, if I get sued, you're gonna come testify. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do animal husbandry, uh, because that's what the. Uh, legislative order on research says that animal husbandry is oh, next. Okay. The, the High King shall manage all military units, captured non combat units, all non combat units created in the capital state. Uh, That's in the Constitution. Yes, excellent. 
So that'll be nice when I do it. So animal husbandry is, animal husbandry is next. Uh, that'll allow us to build pastures and camps, which are what are needed to improve uh, cattle and deer. And it'll also allow us to harvest those things as well. Uh, and it'll also reveal horses on the map for us. So we can start building good horse units. I'm going to move the warrior back to this here. And we're going to start doing our our master plan of luring those spearmen out. Okay. Let's click next turn right here. Oh, I, I didn't write down the goal. 26. Okay. Yeah, 26. Uh, now we're at 31. Okay. So we'll move the warrior there. Move the slinger here. And now we have a settler. Settler, settler, settler. Um, okay, so there are some decent spots. This spot right here seems really nice, but also that spot up there near Vilnius also seems really nice, but also por que no los dos? We can get another settler and settle both of those pretty effectively, I think. Um, and I think the great part... I like that coast city, yeah. The coast... Uh, the coastal? North. I think right now what I'll do is I'll start moving him north. Um, and probably end the session a little sooner than before I settle it so that we can have some time to run it by the council and... Um, the, the sorting yeah. to see if there's anything that they want to comment on. Um, but for now, we're going to start building a holy site. And it looks like that's just going to have to be the position that it's going to be because we don't have enough gold to purchase anything. And this is a nice plus one faith. Unfortunately, we don't really have a much better tile for it anyway. So, yeah, we're just going to build that. that green one? Site. So Why this, is it telling us to build? So essentially, a holy so so districts have certain, um, like conditions for where they have to be built, um, and the green highlighted ones are basically, like, like indicating that they, it can be built there, right? So all these okay. other ones that are are highlighted as well that I can per I can potentially purchase if I have the gold for it. Those are also places that the holy site could go. Um, okay, so that's our only option, basically. Yeah, right now that's our only Agreed. option, unfortunately. But it's not terrible. It gives us plus one faith, which is which is fine. And if you look here, there are these little adjacency bonuses. Um, so because we have um, like forest here, woods. And over here we have woods as well. Those two give us plus one as well as the capital. If we had a third woods, I think the capital plus the three woods would have given us plus two. Um, mm. but anyway, we're going to build that holy site. We're going to get started on that. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, listen, listen. Don't uh -oh. settle. Don't put the district. Too late. <laughs> what happened? Oops. Oh, oh, we know that. He's not talking about the district. Okay. Masenko, do not settle left of the river. Uh, bird. I was saying. Why is that bird? I think it's a Russian thing. Like, uh. Like, uh, what's it called? The flooding? It's susceptible to flooding, and then oh, there's a might volcano be it. nearby? That might be it. I thought it might be a. Oh, but, um, but wait, but look, look, look. Look at the appeal. Look at all the appeal. So normally here. in Civ 6, normally in Civ 6, you want to cram a lot of cities rather than have one in a really good spot. If we settle it to the right of the river, we can nail three cities as opposed to one or two, which is important. Okay, I think that's a consideration, but I also don't really care about optimal play in a lot of senses. Um, and I, I agree. Like here, here's here's my. I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea. I'm not, and I might well, I might well do that. Um, I just want to make it clear that like I want to consider every possible, you know, option. I'm not going to settle just yet. 
So don't worry. I'm going to let the community have some discussion on this um, before I before I settle anywhere. Um, but we're going to start moving the settler north because that's essentially, I think, where we're going to be going. And there's nothing wrong with the coastal city, right? Uh, the only thing or wrong with it right now like... is there's a there's a barbarian encampment there. Okay. That's the only sort of potential issue with it right now, and we don't really have the. We can we can move our military up to go escort it there and take the barbarian encampment, which is something that we should consider as well. But I don't want to make that decision just yet. I think we're gonna end it pretty soon. Um, okay. Knowing that, so we do that. Um, and then we're gonna go this way. Okay, so we're gonna actually back up a little bit because that is a quadrim, um, a barbarian quadrim. So Bird go. says uh, having more cities is good for. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. We can have that discussion when this when I'm actually gonna settle. Uh, we're at thirty one gold, five point two per turn. And do things one, get okay. dark suddenly? Uh, yeah, actually, the uh, the there's like a day night thing, so everything looks nice and dark, huh? It's pretty cool. Does it have any effect? No, it's just. It's just sort of flavorful. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. I like it a lot. Um, okay, we're going to click next turn. Did you catch the numbers? Yeah. Okay. All right. And we finished foreign trade. Uh, Isabel Hoving says, that's the positive aspect of trade, I suppose. The world gets stirred up together. And then I suppose so. We're gonna move our warrior to the side, and we're gonna let the uh, let the camp see our archer, our slinger, and he'll come out pretty quick. And then the settler is gonna continue north. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Looks like a scout is there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure it's going to take the settler. I think it might not have enough movement points for that. Um, but it could Why? be wrong. Doesn't he have two? Yeah, but there's a, he's sitting on a hill right now, I believe. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think the. I'm not 100% sure. I could be totally wrong because I don't. I don't know. The scout. The the scout behavior can be a little weird sometimes though too. So there have been times where I've had like a worker in range and it hasn't taken it. Um, we pray. We're gonna hope and yeah. pray. Thoughts and prayers yeah, for our them, settler. So we can pray. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna get rammed for that. We should have gave him escort. Yeah, I forgot about that scout up there, but I don't think it's gonna be too bad. I think we can easily take it back. I'm gonna send my scout back down. Um, from here to see if we can cut him off if he does take him. We still have to worry about that quadrim, so we're pretty fast. Okay, it seems like it's disappeared a little bit. We're gonna go this way. Okay. We're on Operation Save the Settler. Make sure that doesn't get stolen. <laughs> And then uh, the next civic is going to be mysticism. And since we finished foreign trade, um, we're going to look at our government and, uh, or rather, our policies. We can actually um, switch it up now since we researched a new civic. Um, but I don't think I will because I could be wrong. But the... I mean, you have the you, you could. You have the right to do it. The question is if you want to. Uh, yeah, I think depending on... We might go for maritime industries instead of survey. 
since we yeah, finished. Them, oh, oh, you can also. Uh, I see. I think that makes a hundred percent. I'm just double checking to see how long is it going to take till mysticism and so here's my thing. I think we keep survey for now. And the reason we do is because we're not going to be building ships, at least for another seven seven turns. Mm -hmm. um, I see. And so when nine turns go by, we can actually switch it up again once we finish researching mysticism. And by that point, I think. So we'll if you wanna, if you wanna switch, you have to like, can do it like next turn. Yeah, I can't actually do it next turn because um, how it works is uh, for. for when you research a civic that's when you it unlocks it you can you can um you can switch them on any turn but on turns in which you didn't research a civic uh it costs gold to unlock it i see yeah so it, it actually so yeah making gold. waiting for mysticism makes uh yeah so i think it's a good idea to just wait on that for a little bit and we're gonna uh give our settler thoughts and prayers. And he survived. The scout does not seem to want to take it. Oof. Scary. Okay. So as you can see here, the, uh, the spearmen came out of the camp to try to fight this slinger. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sneak in here with our warrior. And we're going to move the slinger back over here. Hopefully the warrior doesn't get attacked and he still continues for the slinger. And then with our settler, I think we're just going to back him up one again. Because I don't want him to get stolen until we finish this little operation over here. Uh, and we're at 42 gold, 5 gold per turn. 5.2. Got it. Okay. Our boat was attacked by the Quadrarim. Um, and I think we're just going to slip by him. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Can we win? Uh, I don't think so. Uh... We have a, we can do a significant amount of damage to it, but we're gonna be pretty low, which means that we're gonna have to send our dude back. And oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Norway can repair. Uh, out of our own territory. So usually boats can't do that. Boats can't um, like rest outside and gain health back. Mm -hmm. It has to go back to our borders and sit in our borders and do it. Um, but Norway can. So, so how see, can we do it? It's doing Cause we're Norway. Yeah, because we're Norway. That's basically why. Because we're Viking longships. Viking longships are also pretty powerful. So it's gonna actually take only three hits before it dies. So I'm actually gonna fight this. I think. Nice. Um, you know, in the true true pirate battle going on right here. Let's go. I. All hands on deck. Yeah, got him. All right, so now he's at um, I don't know. It won't tell me which how much health it has left. Uh, an unmet player has finished building the Great Bath. By the way, so now that wonder is off the table. The Great Bath is a sort of. Uh, like if you build it next to a river it makes it so that the river doesn't flood anymore and it just gives some food as well mm. so but we don't know that of course because uh, we've never <laughs> bothered looking into it uh, so we, we don't keep... bathe <laughs> Vikings don't bathe awesome we discovered a natural wonder it's Mount Vesuvius <laughs> so uh, Sean Bean's going to take a long time to say this quote so just ignore him in the background. Um, it's a one-tile impassable... This is a good thing wonder. for your party. It's wonderful. I love this. Uh, it's a beautiful volcano, um, and we're going to totally settle it. Um, <laughs> a 
a one pot tile of impassable natural wonder. It appears as a volcano and provides plus one production to adjacent tiles, which is really nice. On eruption, it gives a high yield to adjacent tiles, but large population loss. It is always active. <laughs> that sounds like a great place to build a city. Yes, definitely. So we're going to take a screenshot of that. Uh, and our scout has a promotion for next turn, so that's r lovely. And we also got that. Awesome. All right. Let's hit next turn. 42 gold in the treasury, 5.2 gold per turn still. Okay, so our, our longship is kind of low right now, so we're going to actually um, retreat from this fight. It seems like it took a decent amount of damage. So we're going to go over here. And hopefully the thing doesn't catch up to us. Okay. Looks like Operation Clear the Camp has been successful. So we're going to do that in just a second. Nice. Um, uh... And then next turn, we're going to have to pause because animal husbandry will be done. And um, we won't have any more research orders. So once we take this camp, these barbarians here are going to go aggro on us, including the scout potentially. So we're going to actually um, start running our settler or our uh, slinger away as far as we can from this so he doesn't die. shoot that well you have the power to um make decisions on research yeah but we're gonna we're gonna pause i think we had a really successful uh we had a pretty successful yeah cleared the encampment military tradition has been advanced we're gonna have to make this uh, treasury worksheet uh work more automatically no worries. Um, I don't really know how to do spreadsheets very well, so I don't know if you could do either. it. Me uh, neither. We'll we can, find someone. We can find someone to do it. So this settler is going to just chill here for another turn until we get these guys back to escort it. Because I don't want it to die. Okay. So clicking next turn. Wait, why do we why do we have ninety two gold? Why we get that? Oh, uh, that's because we cleared the encampment. The encampment gave us money. Fifty. Yeah. How much? How much did it give? Uh, whatever the difference will be, <laughs> minus like, so probably minus five okay. from now, then minus whatever it is. Sorry, okay. I forgot to mention that. So we did just finish sure, research like searching animal husbandry. Um, and we're in turn thirty, right? Yep, turn thirty. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take some screenshots for what's going on here. Saint Petersburg. Take a picture of the reports. Resources, city status, global resources. We got our Pantheon. Um, we've got our government. Tech tree. Got our Pantheon, we already saw that. Okay, so we got a lot of nice screenshots going on. It's gonna take a while for me to finish all those screenshots, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we've had a pretty Does successful- 45 gold sound uh, right for Yes, yeah. it should, it should be. 
Um, okay. I think usually that's how much it gives at this point in the game. So we've got a bit of a hostage situation here with our warrior. Uh, so we, we're definitely going to try to fortify him and use this slinger to try and bail him out. Um, but I want to see what my military advisor recommends for all of this. What my We have some very interesting diplomatic um, options for the future with these two city-states here and with our discovery of St. Petersburg. Um, they seem like a very... Even though Peter doesn't like us still for whatever reason, he seems friendly. He uh, sent us a delegation. He's been courteous to let our scout go through his lands. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can get a little picture of plus two, minus two. Yeah, so he's just barely unfriendly with us. Um, no grievances or anything. Okay. Yeah, and so we finished that. We finished Animal Husbandry, and with that, I'm going to save the game. And exit. Good session. Good session, thanks. A lot of, a lot of interesting things. Yeah, it was, really, it was a really good game. Um, thanks everyone for joining in the stream, if you did. And thanks, of course, to my wonderful heir for joining me. Uh, and making sure I Thank was doing you, everything right. And um, yeah, have a wonderful day, everyone.